haven't deciphered and come out with the final list of the species. So we have got several such species and then they all form part of the intricate ecosystem. And then every, every species that is there in the ecosystem has got a role to play. And second thing which we do not know much is what role each species has got in the ecosystem to play. So if we do not have all these knowledges, we don't have any right to intimidate in this kind of ecosystem and then disturb it. So the best way is to keep it intact and then uh, uh, do not intervene much into that because we know that a complicated ecos ecosystem, if we meddle with it, then there will be crash. Crash of the ecosystem, ultimately it will affect us. And, and very important thing is to know about these lesser known species and then I think last webinar was on ants. So you must have, many of you might have participated in that and then you might have understood what role they play and all. So many, today I think Karthikeyan, he's, he's going to speak in detail about uh, the spiders. And then I don't know how many of you, but many, many of them, even if you search on the Google and all that, they get confused with the insects. Yes, sir. I joined now. Yeah. So spiders are not insects, even though they both are arthropods, but there is a difference. What we need to understand is what are these creatures, why they are there with us, what is our role to protect them and what, what, how helpful they are to us. We need to know all those things. Many of the people, they say spiders means it's a very threatening kind of thing. They are poisonous and they, they have come on this earth to um, uh, kill us. Uh, all sorts of uh, misconceptions will be there in our minds, especially in the minds of the kids. But at the end of this webinar, I'm sure you will, all those misconceptions will go and they will all be disbanded and then you will be, uh, and your outlook towards the spiders will change. I, I hope that. So uh, these, uh, these spiders, what we are going to talk about, just to give you a glimpse of that, that we have got 45,000 species, types of those. And they are as small as 0 0.01 uh, uh, millimeter to almost the size of our foot. So, so there is a variety in that. So, so, so it's, it's a big world of uh, spiders and then one only one thing i will tell what role they have got to play in the ecosystem is that there are they are a very very important part in the food chain in what we call food web so you might have learned in your uh, science classes in the food web they are very important part and they are the predators of several insects and other species which are harmful to us so this is this is only one thing I have told what role they have got to play in the uh, ecosystem. So let's learn more about these uh, spiders spiders today. And then I thank Natesh and the wildlife wing for uh, having uh, invited me to just initiate the topic. It's not a keynote address or like that. Rest all it will be taken over by Karthikeyan. He will give you everything about the spiders and all those things. I thank once again and good luck to all and then be, be, be involved yourselves in the conservation of Sir, you are in mute. Sir, we can't hear you, sir. You are in mute. You are in mute. Muted, sir. Sir, you are in mute. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, thank you for uh, uh, explaining. Uh, the importance of the spiders in the ecosystem. So actually, uh, I think uh, our next speaker who is uh, expert on the topic will uh, take the uh, take us the uh, all uh, first spin to the detail. You know, so beko yekta jala pa. So uh, other than the speaker, I request all the participants once again. Kindly mute yourself so that the, uh, the webinar will be effective. Otherwise, uh, somebody intervening uh, disturbs the speakers. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, may I request everyone, please mute all your mics so you will have opportunity for all your questions. Kartikeyan will be there answer all your doubts. Okay. So just uh, mute all your mics so that everybody can hear. Sir, I will just tell actually, I saw Sai Nihal. I was raising his hands for some questions. Uh, I just, uh, Nihal, I just tell you, uh, the guest speaker is going to deliver his uh, PowerPoint presentation and uh, whatever the inputs there.
and uh, if you have any doubt all, all, all the participants any who doubt please who asked you to write message to shilani no she didn't know how do you write on my name a uh, please how uh, will you write on my name ravi sir yeah uh, please text in your questions and doubts whatever you have all your questions and doubts will immediately be answered at the end of the this you know it will be an answered uh, at the end of the session and over and above that whatever the questions you left with will again have a question and answer session followed by quiz online quiz as well as offline quiz there will be two phases and all the quiz participants will definitely get a certificate and uh, the winners will also be uh, given uh, rewards during the world day week celebration time that is on the uh, first week of uh, october so i now will not take much time i introduce uh, mr karthik kn who is the chief naturalist in the jungle lodges and resorts uh, our uh, one of the a uh, uh, company that is government uh, one in, involved in uh, eco tourism promotion in the state of karnataka i uh, uh, welcome uh, mr karthikeyan and uh, it's over to you karthikeyan for next session thank you thank you uh, before i start off and uh, uh, start sharing my screen i would like to thank um, e south and uh, the karnataka forest department particularly uh, mr sanjay bijur and um, Mr. Natesh for uh, doing the honors. <clears throat> um, yeah, like all of you know, today the topic for uh, discussion is spiders. Um, so I will go about start um, uh, sharing the screen. But then prior to that, I would like to reinforce what has already been said. Uh, I would expect all of you to keep yourself on mute and also turn off your videos, please, because videos uh, eat a lot of bandwidth. So we don't need. the video what we need to uh, do actually is for you to see what i'm going to share that is more important so um, it's it'll be good if you can all uh, mute yourself and um, uh, also mute your videos uh, there will be ample opportunities to answer for question and answers we will try and answer as many questions as possible and it's a request that uh, none of you um, unmute yourself in between and ask questions and stuff like that you please make a note of your questions and you will always uh, get an opportunity to um, ask these questions i am sure uh, santosh and um, manju who are from ce will be able to moderate the question answer uh, session at the end of my talk i will not be entertaining any uh, questions in the middle of the talk i hope that is very clear to all of us okay. yes kartikeya yes kartikeya yeah. thank you thank you hello um see the um, uh, screen can all of us see the yeah. screen uh, yes sir yes sir we yeah. can see the screen yes sir yes sir yes sir we can see yes sir we can see it's small Guys, i don't want all of you to be answering all these questions please mute yourself otherwise i may have to stop halfway and then uh, say thank you I don't want to hear. Uh, yeah, spiders is going to be the talk topic of the day, and uh, we'll be talking about spiders. Typically, like what was mentioned earlier when um, we began the session, people normally think of. large animals and things like that the moment we talk about wildlife but then uh, we have a whole lot of organisms which share the with us and uh, it's important for us to understand some of these as well um so having said that today we will start talking about spiders um and this these are all the things that we are going to be we'll be talking about uh, what a spider is like it was again mentioned we often mistake a spider for other things we will try and understand what the differences are we will also try and understand what where they are found what what are the kind of numbers that they are found and all of that we will also understand 
the role of spiders in the ecosystem um, as a predator, as a prey and stuff like that. We'll look at how um, spiders indulge in mimicry and camouflage. We'll also see how <clears throat> spiders take care of their young ones. And we'll also finally end with um, the uh, common spiders uh, before we uh, move on to the question answer session. I hope that is okay with you. If you have any questions in mind, please pay attention to what I'm saying. Many of your questions may already be uh, answered as part of my talk. If there isn't an answer to your query, then you can probably make a note of it and then we can discuss it at the end of it. Great, thank you. Welcome. Okay, let's begin with. Uh, okay. Uh, human beings, uh, maybe the predecessors of the human beings came onto planet many years ago. I hope all of you can read the numbers and then quickly do a mental math. I don't want answers. Do a mental math of the number of years that a human being and his ancestors have been on the planet Earth. But it's also at the same time important for us to see how long other creatures, particularly spiders, have been on planet Earth in come. Just take a look at that. They've been here for a much, much longer time than human beings have. So they have figured out a lot of things which we are only trying to figure out now. So spiders are, in some sense, um, very capable uh, of doing a lot of things that human beings are still trying to uh, meddle with at this point of time. So what are spiders? Very important for us to answer this question because at the end of the talk, um, uh, those of you who have attended this program, particularly I see a lot of youngsters, which is a very um, uh, interesting sign. Uh, I don't want anyone to go away and call an insect a spider or a spider an insect. So pay attention to what I'm going to say and uh, where I'll be talking about the differences between insects and spiders. Okay. Go. On the left. I'm not going to go. Um, please, um, I'm not going to keep going back and forth, and um, I don't want anyone talking in between. Thank you. Um, yeah, going back to insects and spiders, the left hand side that you see, body of the spider into three parts the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. And that is one of the very important aspects of an insect. Also, you will see that insects have three pairs of legs, one, two, and three, and that is the character of an insect. While if you look at the spider, you will find that the body is divided into just two, uh, where the head and the thorax are merged into one, and then you have the abdomen. So there are only two parts to the body of a spider, and it also has four pairs of legs. That is, they have eight legs. So it is important for us to remember these. I'll just very quickly mention this. Insects have uh, their body divided into three parts and they have three pairs of legs. So that's easy to remember. While spiders have two parts to their body and their leg, uh, they have four pairs of legs. So uh, please do remember this. It's very, very simple. And uh, there are a whole lot of other differences as well. Insects have compound eyes, spiders have simple eyes, insects have wings while spiders don't have wings. Uh, insects have antennae while spiders don't have antennae. So these are some of the other differences as well. But when you look at an, uh, an organism, it's very easy to say whether it's an insect or a spider if you have any confusion by just looking at the number of legs or the number of body parts. So these two are easy to see and a lot of other smaller characters like the eyes and things like that. Okay, great. We'll quickly move on and look at who are all the other characters of spiders? Like I said, spiders have been um, around for a very long time, and uh, they also have a lot of relatives. So let's quickly see who are all the relatives of spiders. We have something called a pseudoscorpion. These are very tiny creatures, and it's called a pseudoscorpion. It's not a scorpion uh, itself. It just got the, uh, one pair of appendages which look like the pincers of a scorpion. Therefore, they get the name pseudoscorpion. You have something called a whip scorpion. This is not a scorpion either. It's got this long tail, and that's how they get their name, uh, whip scorpion. Though, of course, they have their front appendages, which look like the pincers of the scorpion again. 
have the true scorpions, which are also related to spiders. You have mites and ticks, which are again a very, very large group of organisms, which uh, again are related to spiders. We also have some mites, which are very beautiful. You usually see these during the first rains of the season, just after the summer when we have the first rains. You have um, the red velvet mites, which come out in fairly large numbers in many of our forests. Also, I have something called a sun spider. Uh, these are again not spiders, not true spiders, but these um, are creatures which can run quite fast and typically found in fairly dry areas. We also have something called a harvestmen. Uh, harvestmen are also related to spiders. You can see the difference in this case. The body and the head are also fused into one whole. Um, the single uh, sir, so sir, your presentation is uh, not viewed. So have, and also Good. they have four pairs of. Die and die and spiders are found, in. and how many species? They are all going to be talking like this. I'm going to stop. There is. If all of you are going playing mischief there, your name. I'll resume only after everybody has gone quiet. Thank you. Let us look at spider distribution and their diversity. Diversity is basically the number. Spiders that uh, you have um, uh, in the world. Let us quickly look at some of those. Spiders are pretty much found everywhere on planet Earth. You will find them all over the place. In all terrestrial uh, ecosystems, you will find spiders uh, from tropical forests all the way up to 22,000 feet <laughs> up in the Himalayas. So spiders are found pretty much Sir, some okay. Guys, if you are going to keep training and talking, I'm going to stop. No matter, I'm going to stop. If you are interested, please be here or please um, you can leave the meeting. There's no problem. Don't make it difficult for the others, please. Thank you. Karthik, can you hear me? I can hear you, sir. Yeah, just a minute. Actually, there is some uh, uh, were disturbing like this. Actually, there are some network issues. Negative. Negative. one Please. Please. to be Thank able you. to deliver a lecture like this sir should i continue yeah please 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 get in get in please yeah so, have known across the world, and we have more than 1,500 uh, in India itself. And let us not forget that spiders. Uh, there's a lot of interest among spy in spiders today, and there's a lot of work that is happening. And new species of spiders are being described um, across the world. Uh, India being no exception at all. So, there are more and more new species of spiders that are being found by. A lot of spider enthusiasts and arachnologists, both in India and in the other parts of the world. The variety that we have among spiders, uh, if you look at your screen now, you'll see all <coughs> shapes and sizes, uh, some which look like hands, some which look like snails, some which have long spines on their bodies, some which are extremely colorful, and some which build some amazingly beautiful webs. 
we'll try and understand a little more about each one of these things as we go along. So okay. spiders as a group are an extremely interesting and beautiful group of organisms. Let's and who's the biggest and who's the smallest. So the biggest spider in the world is a tarantula and it's about 12 inches and weighs about 170 grams. 170 grams is a fairly large creature. And the smallest one measures a 0.37 mm only. And that is really, really tiny compared to a 12 inch tarantula. <laughs> so we have really big ones and really small ones as well. And Sir, the name of the smallest spider? Um, you have the uh, tarantula here, some of the that we have in India, some which mm -hmm. three burrows, some which live on hollows in the ground and all of that. Um, you also have the giant wood spiders, which are some of the largest spiders which we have in the country also. And uh, they build some huge webs. Some of these giant wood spiders that you are seeing on the screen are able to build webs across 20 or 30 feet um, uh, openings in the forest. So they are really, really amazing creatures. This is a giant wood spider from the nor from North India, from India. Also have some really thing on the body itself, maybe all of two, three millimeters, and not more than that. So they are really, really tiny. Just to colors that they come in, uh, just pay attention to what you're seeing on the screen. Okay, so Sir. for take it for granted that spiders are predators. And as predators, it's also important for us to understand that not all predators can use the same strategy. Uh, different species of uh, spiders use different strategies, and that is what we will try and understand now. And also, the moment we talk about spiders, we all think of how spiders build webs. But then let us not forget for a moment that a lot of spiders do not build webs at all. So here we go. This is the giant wood spider that I was talking about. <laughs> you can see how uh, large webs that they can build. And this is all the web building spiders use. They use a strategy called a passive strategy, wherein they don't do anything at all. They just build a web sit on the web and then wait for something to get trapped in their web and then make a meal of it. So this is just one example. We'll go on to see several other examples of web building spiders where you have something called a debris weaver. You have one of this uh, typically uh, you'll see yes, that uh, uh, the web uh, is built uh, close to the ground and, and the spider uh, middle of the uh, tunnel. Different kinds of different kinds of webs, and uh, this one looks like a little tent, and this is in fact called a tent spider. Yeah. And yeah, well, many of them are also very well reported. Many of them are all when. Uh, waiting in their webs. You can see a spider which has caught a damselfly here, a spider which has caught a mosquito here. That probably tells you the role of spiders as well as predators which control uh, a lot of pest creatures as well. You have another example of a spider which is a hunter. which does not build a web though in this case. This is a crab spider which waits for which other insects to come uh, when they come to drink the nectar, they end up becoming the meal of a spider. Let's move on and look at some of the active spiders. Mm -hmm. Here you have something called a lynx spider, which are active hunters. These do not catch prey. Instead, they actually go hunting uh, for food. There are spiders that you can see on your screen now. We have jumping spiders, which are a fairly large group. We have jumping spiders is quite interesting. And all of them are
some to yourself. Thank you. So um, the jumping spiders are a fairly all are active hunters as well. You can see how in this picture uh, managed to catch a very large caterpillar and is making a meal of it. Again, jumping spiders, the whole array of them here feeding on a winged ant. Uh, and pink spider, which is also pink spider, <laughs> feeding on a mosquito. And a giant crab spider feeding on a huge moth, many times bigger than itself. That talks about the capability of predators. You also have some okay, okay. fishing. You are fishing. Very well adapted to staying afloat on water. It will not sink like any other creature that would fall on water would. <coughs> it has special adaptation to be able to stay on the surface of the water and be able to fish. Couple of eggs. Okay. Okay. can you please uh, uh, mute yourself? Yes. We also have spiders which have taken to a very interesting lifestyle. And these are spiders which build a web. See a, a small insect or something that is running by. And these are called, these have really, really large eyes. And uh, they build a web. Then they throw it on any of the prey that is moving below them. This is how the whole spider looks like. And this is the strategy that they use. You can see how they build a web, hold it between their four legs. And then when they see a prey moving beneath them, they use the web to trap the uh, prey. Very, very interesting strategy that these spiders use to catch their prey. If you thought words like stealing and some of these things are only in the human dictionary, but well, there are spiders which also indulge in stealing. Spiders, what you see on the screen is one of the silver spiders. And these uh, typically um, sit on the webs of other large spiders, particularly some of the orb web spiders. And then they feed on little creatures that get trapped onto the web or sometimes steal from the owner itself. This is another. Okay, sir. And you can see how here the owner of this web is sitting in one corner while the two silver spiders are making a meal of a tiny, which was of no interest to the spiders which spit. And here they spit a silk, which will then hold the prey down to the substrate, like you can see in this picture. The spider spits, localizes the prey, and then it will come and eventually bite it and then drink it up. We should all as part of an ecosystem. Very often it is a predator as well as a prey, and spider is no exception. Spiders are also very important prey for a lot of other organisms. And let us see who are all the creatures that feed on spiders. Wasps are amongst um, uh, one of those very important predators of spiders. Here you can see, uh, which is managed to catch a spider. And what do they do is very, very interesting. Um, many of these spiders are paralyzed. This wasp bites the spider and paralyzes the spider and then takes it and puts it into a small hole in the ground. Or maybe if it's a potter wasp, build a little a pot and then puts the spider or a caterpillar or whatever else into that pot and then lay eggs on it and then they will go away. So um, when the eggs hatch, the uh, young ones have fresh food uh, to feed on. So this is the strategy which many of the wasps use and they all a lot of wasps do specialize in feeding on spiders. You can see here this spider is actually 
taking away a tarantula. So uh, they are very strong predators as well. Wasps are very uh, strong, powerful predators as well. We also have certain birds which have specialized in feeding on spiders, like what you see on the screen here, called a spider hunter. You also have other which, uh, spiders themselves are predators and they also are prey. And this is a classic example of uh, predator prey and prey can be predator. So you can see um, this jumping spider feeding on another spider. And here again, you can see one spider feeding on another. And here you have another interesting spider called the Portia. The name of the spider is Portia. It actually gets onto the webs of a lot of other spiders and eats up the owner of the web. So very intelligent spider as well. Uh, lizards, it could be centipedes, it could be scorpions, and like I just you know, said, other spiders as well. Uh, creatures do make a meal of spiders. So that makes spiders very important in this whole ecosystem. So there is there are instances where spiders eat spider metabolism. So there are several occasions when you can see one spider eating another spider of the same kind. Uh, like you can see here, a classic example of one spider which is feeding on another spider of the same kind. One such Uh, we've seen that spiders are able to feed on another that they can never live together, which becomes very, very risky to live together. Imagine if all of us were in one room and if we start eating each other up, the strongest would survive, right? So it becomes difficult to live together in a situation where you have your own kind eating your own kind. So, <coughs> but there are uh, some spiders which have given up this uh, behavior and taken to a social living. And these doors, good chance that you'll see one of these big uh, nest like thing on a bush or maybe on telephone wires or electric wires as well. This is called the social spiders. They build these huge nest like things, and each nest has many, many uh, individual spiders. And they all usually come out in the evenings and catch, take whatever is stuck to the web during the day and then take it inside and then make a meal of those. You can see how one bush has several webs uh, on it and several nests on it. And each of these nests will have many, many individuals. Close, and wait it there and look for the spiders to come out. These are the spiders that you are likely to see. What you are seeing on your screen is indeed one of the social spiders. Okay, spider at mimicry, and uh, it is part of their lifestyle for at least some of them to be able to make and then use their capability to be able to survive either to um, maybe get food for themselves or to avoid predation or to be able to hunt other prey. <clears throat> Here is a fantastic example of an ant mimic spider. What you see on the screen is indeed a spider. You can look at the number of legs, and that is a dead giveaway. And this is an ant mimic spider, which looks like ants. Just think about it. All of us are scared of ants or would keep away from ants simply because we all know ants are capable of biting us. So we all would not walk anywhere close to an ant. And this is exactly what the spiders are capitalizing on and the spiders look like ants and therefore avoid drawing attention by their own predators. There's one more such example, an ant mimic spider. There are also uh, which mimic ants. Here you have a crab spider, which is actually mimicking a red ant. Uh, these red ants, I'm sure all of us are, are familiar with. They also are known to give you a a uh, nasty um, uh, bite, and this is something which these spiders are trying to capitalize on. It sort of look like a scorpion, called the scorpion spider. You can look at this. This is the body of the spider, and it's got a long tail and a sting-like thing sticking out, which is which makes it look so much like a scorpion. All right. Let's look at how spiders camouflage themselves and then they 
be able to surprise and also which helps them hide themselves from their own predators. Here we have a classic example of a tree stump spider. And these tree stump spiders, um, like the name suggests, look like tree stumps and they're extremely difficult to spot many a times. We look at a couple more examples. And this spider here looks just like a thorn or a broken twig. This, is, this whole thing is a spider. What you see here, the whole thing is a spider. It's quite an amazing uh, camouflage of uh, the spider exhibits. Look, uh, you will see a spider. Uh, for those of you who are not able to make out where the spider is, you can see the, these are the eyes of the spiders, which means that's a cephalothorax. And you have these two appendages which stick out, making it look so much more like a broken twig. You can see these are the legs of the spider. Amazing camouflage. The same spider, if you look at from a different angle, from the backside particularly, this is how it looks like. Uh, so if you see the spider on a dead branch or sitting quietly during the day, the chances are that you will just walk past and not even know that there was a spider quietly sitting and watching you. So it's amazing as to how many of these spiders are able to camouflage themselves, both to um, save themselves from being eaten up by their own predators, but also to be able to surprise their own prey. There are other spiders like this one, called, which mimic a bird dropping. And you can see many of us um, are familiar with the bird dropping. It typically has a lot of this white matter and also some as part of the bird dropping. So this spider looks quite like a bird dropping and then bluffs its way out and says, hey, look, I'm a bird dropping. I may not be so good to eat. So don't, don't even try to come and waste your time with me. That's what this spider is trying to say. This is one of those bird dropping spiders as uh, it is sometimes referred to. Uh, one more spider which um, mimics bird dropping or maybe a part of a, a debris of a plant or something like that. Right, so spiders also need to reproduce and when spiders have to reproduce, they have to mate and when they, it's important for us to know that in most cases, in spiders, the males are extremely small. What you see in this picture is a male, which is orange in color, is actually sitting on a female, which is really, really big. You can see that. And uh, this is quite amazing. In case of spiders, there's such huge difference between the males and the females. Yeah, once the, uh, they're mated, uh, it is important for them to be able to lay eggs and then be able to take care of the young ones. Here you have. Um, let's quickly look at some uh, parental care amongst um, spiders. Many of the spiders are capable of producing more than one kind of silk. They produce different kinds of silks for different purposes. And um, uh, they could build a different kind of silk to wrap their prey. They could make a different kind of silk to wrap their eggs and things like that. So here you will see how a whole bunch of eggs are held together by very, very minimalistic silk that they've used. Um, it looks more like a bunch of grapes there. This is one of the um, uh, examples of how spiders take care of their um, eggs. One more example here, it has built a case and it is taking care of it, guarding the egg case there. You could also have examples of where a spider has made a egg sack, which is full of eggs which it I, I, hind, hind end and then uh, walks about carrying it all the while. And in examples like that, you can see how the young ones actually come out of the, all clambered onto the back of the mother and the mother will walk about with the young ones for a few Sir, days. there is no progress in your presentation, sir. Uh, so your presentation is the same. Um, that there are a lot of young ones that are, you can also see that a lot of young ones that have um, clambered onto the back of the female, which um, yeah. which the females when they uh, disperse. So 
be discussing updated so we'll continue now okay i have a spider which is built a, a lovely little leafy uh, retreat hold on sir and we yeah this is a spitting is built a leafy retreat where it has a egg sac and the spiderlings all the young ones that have come out of the egg sac okay i'm of the screen slide to come up on your screen yeah there you go i guess you can see um, the lot of tiny little eggs of spiders in the and slowly as the um, eggs hatch you will see how uh, the spiderlings are uh, to the to begin with are quite translucent and they are all still spending a lot of time on the uh, web itself Okay. Sir, okay. Spiders grow; they also have to molt. Let us not forget that spiders have exoskeletons, and they have to molt from time to time, just like we might. Just to give you a crude example as to how our skin peels, the spider also has to shed its entire skin, though. And in the process of molting, they grow. And what is even more interesting is when they molt. Many times, spiders are able to regrow leg, or they have lost the leg when they have been attacked by a predator. They will regrow when they molt. So here you can see how the spider has molt uh, has finished its molting process, and you can see the uh, skin um, uh, which is lying next to it. One more example, you can see a giant foot spider which has just come out of. Um, uh, and it is hanging um, uh, from a sil a silken thread, it's just waiting for its body uh, to uh, harden the skin, new skin to harden before it can become active. Yeah, there you go. I guess you can see the uh, giant wood spider, which is hanging by a silken line. Let's roll of spiders now quickly. We this in brief in the past already, so we'll quickly talk about the role of. Spiders have very interesting, important roles to play. Spiders have a very important role to uh, play as uh, pest control agents. They control un unnecessary pests which are part of our uh, agricultural ecosystem, uh, and also in our homes. There are lots of spiders in our homes, which are doing a lot of interesting things by uh, capturing prey, um, their prey, which is many a times our pest, like maybe mosquitoes, maybe flies, and a lot of. And they keep these things under control. They are very much a part of the food chain. We have seen examples of how spiders are both prey to uh, their predators, and they are also predator to. A lot of other creatures. We've seen both examples by way of pictures in the previous slides. The spiders all have also inspired a lot of innovation, particularly spider silk. There's a lot of research that is happening on um, about spider silk, which is uh, trying to. Um, uh, I mean, scientists are trying to use spider silk for a lot of innovative you know, things that can be used by human beings as well. So um, there is a lot of research going on about spider silk. Also, given the fact that spider silk is an amazing material, and spider silk is stronger than silk, sorry, stronger than steel of the same thickness, so it can become a very important material going forward for human. Spiders are able to provide material for a lot of other uh, organisms. You will see in the picture that is coming up. How a bird, in this case, a common ayora, which is uh, you know collecting spider silk to build its own nest. So it's very important for uh, 
material for a lot of other creatures in the environment as well. Having said that, let's quickly move on and um, look at some of the common spiders that we may see in our gardens or in our. So um, you really need not go very far to see spiders. Yeah. For a second. No, it's clear, uh, Karthik. Please go ahead. Uh, only for some students, maybe their uh, net is low. Please go ahead. Okay. No, sir. Let's uh, look at some common huh? uh, spiders are everywhere, like we said, and uh, therefore it should not be difficult for us to see. Maybe being a maybe even if you have a little garden. Whether you are in an apartment or have an independent house, or if you have gone on a small picnic, wherever you might be, there is a good chance that you are able to see spiders. So, the uh, next few slides, we look at some common spiders that uh, we uh, we can see in our midst. Okay. Um, you will see that these two big guys are very very characteristic of all jumping spiders. And there are some other jumping spiders which have an extremely wide distribution, and they are seen pretty much in, in most a fairly large distribution that these jumping spiders have. The zebra jumper, as it is called, which will be coming up on your screen in a moment. And all of you see this brown and black spider on your screen. Hope all of you can. Uh, black spider on your screen. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Not able to. Yeah. Sir, I can't. Sir, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. There it is now. Sir, now we screen. can see, sir. Yeah, this is called. Great. It's called a zebra jumper. We also have a lot of the lynx spider, which will come up on your screen in a bit. If you have a little garden and you have a lot of plants in your garden, there is a good chance that you will find a green colored spider with a lot of spines on its legs, which will come up on your screen in a bit. Um, and yeah, you can imagine the spider in your minds and then you can relate it to the image that comes up on your screen in a bit. These are fairly uh, spiders with long legs, like you can see now. They are green in color, hiding amongst leaves. And you go looking under the leaves, and there's a good chance that you will see one of these lynx spiders. There are different kinds of lynx spiders also that we are likely to see, not just green ones. We also have ones which are uh, brown or orange, as you can see in the picture that will come up in a bit. Sir, sorry to interrupt, sir. I Karthik, please go on. I would please. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Up, yeah, there you go. Uh, for some reason, there seems to be a lag in the pictures coming up on the screen, so that's why I'm uh, giving time. Okay, a whole lot of crab spiders. Uh, like I said, many of the crab spiders um, are uh, creatures which sit under leaves or maybe typically on flowers. They hide in flowers and then wait for uh, you know insects to come uh, to feed on nectar, and they'll make a meal of it. Some of them can also be very very pretty uh, to look at. Some could be just plain white, as you can see on the screen, uh, while um, others could be uh, a lot more beautiful. Can you see the white one on the screen now? Yeah, great. And, or you could have ones which have white and a few other colors on it as well. Some of them can be very, very beautiful. Some of them take on the colors of the flower on which they are waiting also. Yeah. So these spiders coming up on. So um, uh, let's move on and see other wolf spiders, which are quite common. Uh, let me see. Wolf spider. Um, it will be coming on the screen in a bit. And the. the forest floor or in the ground 
it could be even in a park or a garden or if you are near a water body or something like that you can see these ground spiders actively trying to run away when you are walking um, in those areas you could have uh, some of them uh, the one that will come up on your screen now you will see that it's probably just finished a meal of uh, termites you can see it sitting amidst um, the wings of a termite it will come up on your screen just now in the image coming up yeah there you go other spiders coming up like the signature spider these are fairly common in gardens and they get the name signature spider because of the very prominent white squiggles that you see on their on their webs and sometimes they're also called cross spiders because of the way they sit they sit with their legs paired up and looking like uh, the letter x so um, they are also sometimes called as the cross spiders. You could weavers that would come up on your screen, which are called debris or weavers. You can see on screen now, and these spiders, interestingly, uh, these um, very prominent wheels, and they also bring a lot of dirt and then put it on their it the dirt, camouflaging themselves. It's an amazing way of camouflaging themselves, and it's not easy to spot one of these until unless you really, really go close and observe and look for them. You could have several other spiders, like the orchard spider that would come up on your screen just in a moment. And some of them can be quite pretty as well, um, with very intricate patterning on their uh, body. You could also have others which have very long spines on their body that would come up on your screen now called the and build or webs like many of the typical uh, spider webs that all of us are familiar with and they would build a web like that and sit on the middle of the um, web you can see the spiny orb weaver coming up on your screen now just a second long spine that you have on their on its abdomen this could probably help them protect themselves from their predators as well you also have the other more uh, um, ones with very short spines on their uh, sticking out of their abdomen and these can also be in many gardens and such spaces that you are um, likely to encounter. Like the one that you see now on your screen. Homes or garages and uh, unused spaces may be in corners of your apartment or any such under the staircase or unused spaces in our homes, you are likely to uh, see this little spider. It's got very very long legs it's also sometimes referred to as daddy long legs or sometimes as dancing spiders and it gets the name dancing spider because you disturb it and it will start moving very vigorously on the web and then earning its name uh, the uh, dancing spider and you have one more image of the same coming up uh, you know sitting in a corner with a bunch of eggs it is holding in its uh, mandibles coming up soon Okay, there you go. Live on walls and maybe on trunks. Uh, and uh, this is what is known as. And the two tailed spiders get the name two tailed spiders because they have these two long tail like things, which are actually the organs which produce silk. These spend a lot of time on the, these are the ones which spend a lot of time on tree trunks or on the walls of buildings and they are happily uh, spending time there and they also 
are able to catch a lot of insects and other small creatures and make a meal out of them. You can see one of those image where it has managed to capture another little spider and it has wrapped it up in uh, uh, silk and then uh, it will eventually uh, eat it up. And interestingly, what is um, what you all should know is that spiders, most spiders can't eat solid food. And what they do is they capture prey, they bite them and the venom of the spider acts on the um, uh, in the innards of the uh, prey and it liquefies it. So it will just suck it up like you would probably drink out of a tank. And uh, the spider, that's how a spider gets its meal. Hold on for a second. The picture is coming up for you. You'll see how the spider has wrapped up silk, wrapped uh, the prey with silk and will eventually make a meal of it. Okay, um, that's about all that I have to say. Yeah. Questions I would be uh, glad to answer. I would uh, request um, uh, to or um, uh, to moderate this part of yeah. uh, the uh, session. Thank you so much, all, for uh, a patient hearing and cooperating so that the session um, could go on smoothly. Thank you so much. So there's no quiz going on? Kartik? Sir, uh, can I ask you something? Uh, Kartik, we have just uh, pulled all the questions and WhatsApp you. About 10 questions, we have pulled all the common questions. If you could just quickly look at it and answer, it would be great. Uh, how to go to the WhatsApp group, sir? Sir, is the WhatsApp group even created? There is no WhatsApp group. It's not a public, so don't worry about it. Okay. Sir, how to go to the group? You don't have to go to any group. Just hold on. Have a little patience, please. Um, so one of the... Please, please, there are some questions that I'm going to answer that have come to me. How can we identify if a spider is venomous or not? Let us uh, know that most spiders are venomous. There are only spiders which are non-venomous. But then, as we know, um, as we are spiders in India, so we don't need to worry about it. But then we still need to be careful because some spiders, when they bite, can give you a rash or an allergy. So one needs to be careful. So it's advised that you don't go and meddle with spiders um, if you can avoid. If you accidentally brush up on one, that's a different story. But then please do not knowingly go and meddle with spiders. <clears throat> question two, are spiders found near our homes? Are venomous? I think I answered that question, no. Um, none of the Indian spiders, as we know today, are venomous, so we don't have to worry about that. Question three, which is the most <clears throat> powerful and poisonous spider? This would be a very difficult question to answer. <clears throat> Many a sp a spider are powerful enough for their own prey, the kind of prey that they are going to be catching. So it is very, very relative. Uh, there is nothing like the most uh, powerful spider or things like that. Which is the king of the spiders? Oh. If you are looking at um, the largest spider in the world, like we said, it's one of the bird-eating tarantulas, which is the largest. So if you want to call it the king of the spiders, maybe you can. Actually, technically, the queen, because the queens are bigger. Um, the kings are usually smaller in case of uh, spiders. So uh, next question, which spider has the biggest web? Um, I would think amongst the giant wood spiders uh, are um, amongst the larger uh, spiders, which really, really large webs. Uh, how do we identify if the spider is venomous? It's going to be very difficult. You can't identify a spider and say it is venomous. What is the lifespan of a spider? Again, a very difficult question. We really do not know much about spiders to 
um, talk about the lifespan. But as a thumb rule, we can say small spiders live for shorter periods of time. Large spiders like the current <laughs> large Sorry, not going to take long it. periods of time. However, there are however, there are exceptions to this. How many eggs can spiders lay? Uh, it could again largely depend on the species, like we saw in some of the images of some of the wolf spiders, where there probably were a couple of hundred spiderlings on the uh, back of the mother, to um, the web of one of the jumping spiders, where there are probably just about a dozen eggs. So it is very, very variable, depends on the species. How do uh, floating spiders build their web? These uh, may not actually be building a web. They, um, typically go about, uh, uh, they're active hunters, so they actually don't need to, and they move about on the surface of the water and then they catch their um, uh, prey, which many times is fish or sometimes could be other aquatic insects as well. So Santosh, I think I've answered all the 10 questions. Yeah, these are all the common over questions actually, Kati. I think now we can open up the forum, maybe yeah. we take two questions. So can I ask? So can I ask? Can I ask? Sir, can I ask a question? I think. So can I also ask a question? Can I ask a question? Sir, so can I ask only one question? Can I ask one question? Oh my God. I guess we may not be able to answer questions. We're going to just keep saying, can I ask one question at the same time? I think all your requests are difficult. Kathik, may I request? Uh, we request all the people to put your questions on the chat box. We ensure that we'll answer your questions. I think uh, it is very Santosh, if you can read out the um, questions on the chat box, I would be happy to answer them. Yeah. Uh, Natish, can you have a word from your end? Yeah, th just uh, actually uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Karthike. And actually, it was a very colorful and uh, very pictorial. Uh, it's, you know, uh, actually, Many people will not have a chance, first hand chance to see so many variety of spiders uh, in the live, maybe the, uh, showing them almost in a live uh, scenario. So the pictures were so qualitative, and uh, you can, you can, somebody can you not imagine also because all the pictures were so clear and uh, presentation was so pictorial and uh, very informative. Thank you, Karthik, again, and you have taken the questions of uh, all the kids. Uh, I am sure there are many uh, questions uh, there are in the minds of the, especially young people who are participating here. Uh, we are entertaining, uh, we are encouraging uh, uh, the uh, younger to be uh, participant of this uh, webinar program because this is a more of a educative in nature. Uh, and uh, uh, I had already requested uh, uh, also to keep it in a way that uh, more participation. And uh, I'm really happy seeing the people are uh, very active. Uh, very sorry for the network issues that are encoded in all throughout the presentation, even though it disturbed uh, speakers and all the participants, many of the participants were actually very keenly uh, involved in this one. So because of such few uh, and disturbing element, elements, actually entire uh, program gets disturbed. So I request, uh, uh, in future also, uh, because it will be a series of programs. Uh, if you are only uh, interested to know the uh, and get your you know, and get yourself involved in this uh, sort of webinars, be part of it, or you can stay away from these sort of webinars. It is no compulsion, and uh, uh, it's uh, really uh, you know a lot of effort goes in organizing such a webinar and uh, requesting uh, eminence to be uh, coming in and wasting their time and uh, because you have to be very uh, cautious because uh, you are interacting with the best of the uh, experts in the field and uh, this is an opportunity uh, everybody gets 
we should make best use of this opportunity uh, I know that time is a limitation. Please put your questions on the chat box. Even if it is not answered during this session, the questions will be forwarded to the expert and they will be answered back to you on your email ID. And now I will move on to the next session. Uh, that is quiz. That's a online quizzing. Now I'm sure that all the kids are very uh, much on their toes to participate in this quiz and the fingers are moving very fast. Yes, and I, and over it to uh, George now. George will be uh, continuing with the quiz session. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Natesh. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate the patience of uh, everyone who was part of the uh, whole session. And I think I see a lot of kids who are eagerly waiting for the quiz. So I will sign out and let the kids, um, you know, have a good quizzing. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Sir? So, so am I am I audible? Yes, sir. You are. Yes, sir. 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 Great. I had a chance to uh, listen to the wonderful presentation. Yes, um, uh, before rules of the quiz, I request everybody to mute your mic because you know the answers for this quiz, you need to type it on the chat box, not to give, uh, give a verbal answer. You understand? So I request everybody to mute your uh, mic and uh, use your fingers to type the answer in the chat box. Okay, so I'll come to the uh, uh, rules now. Okay, there will be a total of 15 questions. As I said, uh, you have to only answer in the chat box. Voice answers will not be considered. And the number of questions will be around 15 and uh, you, uh, it will be, you need to type your answer in the chat box only. Okay. And you get, uh, after the question is posted, you get 30 seconds to answer the, an, an, your answer. And the fastest correct answer will be declared winner. You got it? The fastest correct answer will be declared winner. So you need to be very quick in uh, typing your answer, not give out uh, by voice. You understand? And without that particular question, suppose say, like you know, after the question is done, we will be tracking who said the correct answer. Yeah, uh, the winner of this particular question uh, will be announced in the chat box and I will verbally say who is the winner, following which you need to give your full name, email ID and, um, uh, and mobile number. Okay, and uh, for every participant, you will get an e-certificate from the Forest Karnataka Forest Department and at the end, whoever answers maximum questions first will be declared overall winner for which you will be eligible for a mega prize from the Forest Department during the uh, wildlife celebrations which will be held in Bangalore. Okay, so all the best. Keep your fingers crossed. Answer the correct question. Take your time. Uh, give the correct uh, answer. And uh, no verbal. We will not be considering any voice answers. You got it? So let's move to the first question. Sir, uh, sir, I have a doubt. Yeah, yeah please. Sir, should we go in everyone chat box or uh, your so chat you box? Type your answer, you, no, no, you type your answer in the chat box. If your answer is uh, the correct, in the first, you need to come. Uh, the correct answer. Then only you get the point. You understand? Very yes, easy. Sir. Okay. Uh, sir, can, sir, can I do in the private chat? Uh, sir, no, no, no. You have to put it in the uh, public chat only. You have to what, whatever is that. No, no private chat should be allowed. Okay. Sir, you mean to put in the private chat, sir? No, no. Sir, sir. Uh, if your answer is correct and you are declared winner, then only your email ID and the phone numbers you have to share. Your full name, phone number, and email ID has to be shared. Okay. Sir, can I ask you something? I will let you know. I will let you know who is the winner. Following which you need to type Sir, your. Can I um, ask you something? 
sir if i try to type anything in the everyone uh, thing i can't do i like it doesn't go no 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 you have to enter you have to type and say, say enter it will enter if you come to our uh, chat box you can see your answer and uh, answers of others also okay but you need to be the first to answer it correctly sir, okay i'm i'm doing high <laughs> No, no, we will move on because it's very easy. You'll understand what it is. You, I'll put the question. I'll give you thirty seconds, and um, uh, within thirty seconds, you need to answer in the chat box. Call chat box. No private chat uh, to be. It will not be considered. Okay. Thank you. Excuse me, sir. Now we are starting. No more questions, please. Thank you. Box is not visible. Ah, huh. can you see? Which is the only place in the world where there are no spiders found? That is the question you have. Which is the only place in the world where there are no spiders found? Please type in your answer in the chat box. I'll just give you thirty seconds. After which we will declare the winner. Okay, the time is up. The answer is okay. The answer is Antarctica. The continent of Antarctica is the only place where spiders are not found. As uh, Mr. Karthikeyan, and the resource person, had told, it is found almost every every terrestrial ecosystem, but not in Antarctica. The, the fastest many of you have given the answer correctly but uh, the person who answered it first samant s as uh, answered it first congrats samant you can you may type your full name samarth s you may type your answers in the sorry you may type your uh, name full name mobile number and email id for which you will get a certificate congrats samant we will move on to the next question how many spider species are found in india How many spider species are found in uh, in India? The person who uh, close, uh, if you can give the exact number, nothing like it. Otherwise, the person who is going to give the closest will be declared as winner. Okay. How many spider species are found in India? All these answers were there in Mr. Karthikeyan's uh, presentation, and if you are very alert, you would have got the answers right. Okay. Let's move to the answer. Times up. There are about 1685 recorded species of uh, spiders in India, uh, belonging to uh, 438 genera and 60 families. These are the recorded uh, species. In Karnataka alone, we have about 254 species from 29 families. So the correct answer is 1685. Let us see if uh, who's uh, given it very closely. One six eight. Sir. Sir, sir, actually, actually for Antarctica, even Naresh also typed it five fifty nine. Sir, two people typed Samarth and Naresh. No, no, no. We want the person who gave uh, first was Samarth, since he was given the uh, no. But the, so the correct but the answer for the second same, one sir. is uh, Me Mega. Mega is uh, Mega has given it correctly sixteen eighty six. So uh, she gets the point. Congrats, Mega. Please uh, share your. Uh, email id full name and uh, phone number thank you sir we are i have written 65 only sir i have a doubt okay sorry there is a correction uh, the correct answer was given by saad saad and sao uh, uh, 1685 is a correct answer so saad please share your email id and mobile number thank you sir i have a doubt no 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 there is no doubt Identify this spider species. If you are attentive in the last uh, presentation, you would have seen uh, Sir mentioning about this. Please uh, identify this spider species. Chat with everyone, Sir. Okay. Close the thing. Okay. So let's uh, see the answer. Yes, uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, correct answers. The correct answer is giant wood spider. There are about six species of giant wood spider found found in India. Giant wood spider female weave the biggest webs in India. This is the answer. Correct answer is giant wood spider. Let's see who's answered it correctly. Gayatri. Gayatri. Gayatri has answered it correctly. Congrats, Gayatri. You may 
you may share your email id and um, uh, phone number and um, full name please thank you good going gayatri thank you sir what is the study of spiders called what is the study of spiders called okay a lot of answers are coming let's see the answer the study of spider is called arachnology it is the study of uh, spider and related species such as scorpions pseudo scorpions ticks and mites collectively called as arachnids so arachnology is the correct answer and the uh, person who answered it correctly first was samarth samarth congrats so you are uh, leading now with two points now please i think you have the email id in the previous uh, for the previous answer Congratulations once again. Okay, so we'll move on. How many pairs of antenna does a spider have? How many pairs of antenna does a spider have? Oh, very good. I see lot of answers. One, two, three, four. Many. Very good. That's a very good participation from all of you. So let's see the correct answer. In fact, uh, spiders does it have any antenna? Only the ants have got antenna. So the correct answer is zero. Uh, somebody by name ABC. If you can tell who is ABC, he is the uh, he is not given the full name. ABC is answered it correctly. ABC. If you can share your full name in the chat box, full name, uh, email ID, and uh, phone number. If you type it as ABC, we will not be able to send you the certificate. Okay. Thank you. Next question is very easy. How many legs does a spider have? My goodness, very fortunate to see so many lightning answers. Very good. Okay, let's move on. This which is a very easy one. Eight legs or four pairs of legs it has got. so that was one of the identifying features how do you differentiate uh, spiders from normal ants okay suesh 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 is uh, answered it correctly suesh uh, you may please type your answer, uh, correct full name email id and uh, phone number okay so we'll move on which is the world's biggest spider biggest spider in the world Giant uh, spiders, but you need to get the full name, not the you know the uh, group which we have. I want the full name of the spider. Okay, let's go see the answer. The world's biggest spider is Goliath bird eater spider, belonging to the uh, family Taran Tarantula. It's found in the northern parts of South America, so it's not found in anywhere in India. It's found in the northern part of uh, South America in the Brazilian forest. It's the largest spider in the world by having uh, about uh, 175 grams body weight and size about 12 inches. You can see the size of this uh, Goliath bird eater spider. Let's see who's got it correctly. Samarth has answered it correctly. Congrats, Samarth, for uh, giving the full name. Many people have uh, written Toranto, but it's a family. But I wanted the name of the uh, spider, Goliath uh, bird eater spider. Okay, Samarth leading by three points. Samarth uh, is leading by three points. Uh, So I request uh, others to also catch up with Samarth and give him a, comp a competition. Which are the deadliest spider in India? Which are the deadliest spider in terms of venom in India? Let's see. Let's see the answer now. so widow spiders widow spiders are called the deadliest uh, um, uh, species of spiders in india we have about three species of widow spiders in india uh, so this belongs to the group uh, uh, lactrodectus uh, is the broadly the genus of spider where uh, this um, uh, widow spiders are there this group is composed of uh, 
loosely uh, 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 species from black widow spider, brown widow spiders, and sibless spiders. So in India, we have about three species, which is uh, you know all widows are widow spiders are very very venomous, and this is also considered as the uh, most venomous spiders in India. Widow spider is the answer. Who's sir, uh, sir, uh, sir, sir, didn't set that. Thing. The correct answer was given by Nagacharan, widow spider. Nagacharan has given the correct answer. Nagacharan, you may share your name, full name, uh, email ID, and the phone number. Thank you. Most of you, instead of typing widow spider, most of you have answered it as window spider. There is a lot of difference between widow spider and uh, window spider. You may check the internet and see the difference. Thank you. Spider silk is true is stronger than steel wire. Steel wire of same thickness, true or false? Spider silk is stronger than steel wire of same thickness. Is it true or false? True. True. Okay, we can uh, go to the answer. Yes, it is true. Uh, spider silk is known to be five times stronger than silk. Uh, there is a protein, a spider silk is a protein fiber spun by spiders. They use their silk to make webs or other structures which function as sticky nets to catch other animals or as nests or cocoons to protect their offspring or to wrap the prey. So let us see who's answered it correctly first. Second, first. Yeah, Nishil George has answered it correctly first. Congrats, Nishil. You may share your full name, email ID, and phone number. Okay, the two, uh, spider uh, silk is five times stronger than the steel. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Identify the spider. It's very, very easy spider. <coughs> I see a lot of answers, correct answers. This also only shows that, you know, most of you are very, very attentive. Apart from the very few which are trying to, you know, disturb others. Let's see the answer. The answer is ant mimicking spider. If you are typed it, ant spider also we will give it. Uh, these spiders have behavioral features which represent an ant. Uh, they also move in a zigzag locomotion pattern and creating an, uh, 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 creating an antennal illusion by waving their first and second pairs of legs in the air. So this will this will help them to escape from predators. This uh, behavior will help them to um, uh, escape the predators at types of danger. So the correct answer is ant making spider or ant spider. We will give to ant spider also. Aditya Gorpade. Aditya Gorpade, you have answered it correctly. Congrats. Please share your email ID, phone number and um, full name, please. Thank you. Next question. Name the only spider in the world that is a half. And Sam. It's not a carnivore, it's an herbivore. Uh, there is only one spider in the world which is known to be herbivore. You may share your answer. Okay, let, let us see the correct answer. The only spider in the world which is supposed to be herbivore is Bagheera Kipling, uh, found in. Costa Rica, it is also it is a species of jumping spider. It fe uh, mainly feeds on protein nodules of acacia trees. So the correct answer is by Kiplingi. Kiplingi. And the correct answer was given by Nagacharan. Nagacharan has given the correct answer. Congrats, Nagacharan. I think the competition is between Samar and Nagacharan for the first place. So okay, keep up the spirit. And you know, in the coming few uh, questions, you need to answer quickly to get the mega prize. Let's move on. Spider's body is divided into cephalothorax and what? There is another, uh, you know, sir was telling uh, the very to distinguish spider uh, from spy, uh, from ants, you need, uh, body is divided into two parts. Cephalothorax and what? Okay, let us see the correct answer. Body is divided into two parts, that is cephalothorax and abdomen. The correct answer is abdomen. Uh, whereas in the ants, it is you have head, cephalothorax, and abdomen. So the, uh, in the spiders, it is cephalothorax and uh, abdomen. Uh, so correct answer is abdomen. Let's see who 
who's done it correctly? Nishil. Now, Nishil is uh, answered it correctly. Nishil, congrats. Uh, you may share your uh, email ID. I think Nishil also is catching up with Samarth with uh, two points. Samarth is leading with. Uh, uh, second is Nagacharan. Second is Nagacharan at this point of time. And uh, Nishil is also two, Nagacharan also two. Yes. Also, others are also in one. Okay, let's move on. So, this is a time to decide who will be the winner in the next couple of sides. Which data better which makes these kinds of web? Okay, this, this question is not valid. What is the color of the blood of spider? What is the color of the blood of spider? This is the last question. What is the color of the blood of spider? White. Many people have said the blue, white, green, colorless. Very interesting. So let's see the answer. Color of the blood of spiders is blue color. I see a lot of uh, blue color answer. It is, uh, it is because of the presence of hemocyanin. It's, uh, you know, because of that, uh, it is dissolved in the limb that gives the color, uh, blue color. Okay, unlike uh, in uh, other species where the blood is red, it is because of uh, the, the oxygen is bound to the uh, copper copper molecule and which gives the blue coloration to the blood. So the correct answer is blue and who has answered it correctly? P. Suchitra. P. Suchitra has answered it correctly. P. Suchitra. Sorry. P. Sucharita. P. Sucharita has answered it correctly. Congrats uh, P. Sucharita for giving the color, color of the uh, spider as blue. You get a point. Please share your email ID and Full name, email ID, and phone number, please. Not coming here. Not coming. Anyway, it was one more it. question. I was a I got disconnected, sir. No, no, no. We can't help it for that. Okay. Uh, with this, we come to the end of uh, the quiz competition. There is a very good African proverb which says, when spiders web unite, they can even tie up a lion. So all of you should come together and, you know, uh, work for the preservation of nature and you know the wonderful uh, living creatures we have around the, in our in, in Karnataka and in, also in India and um, you know uh, understand the law, uh, secrets of nature and try to appreciate them. So all of you will start liking nature and you know will have a better and just world. So now I'll uh, announce the winner of this. Uh, uh, okay, first of all, we'll we'll give a uh, big clap for. For uh, wonderfully participating. However, we have three winners. Uh, the first one is to Samarth. I think everybody should give a big uh, Samarth. And the second prize goes to Nagarjuna. Nagarjuna gets the second prize, which is the second two points. And the team job also gets a second prize with two points. So, congratulations. To all three of you, well played. And the others also got one one points. For all of you, will get uh, email. Uh, all of you will get your um, participation certificate, e certificate, which will be sent to your email IDs. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, next week also we will be having the same quiz at the same time with another topic. Uh, please do join us at the same time for. Uh, so when is the? So when is the next webinar? Is the prize? It's on same uh, uh, Wednesday, say four thirty onwards. It will be. Uh, thank you, thank you, oh, George. Uh, sir, where is the details 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 Sir, where is the details being shared? Thank you. Sir, where is the details being shared? Kids will just wait a minute. We'll be uh, announcing the next thing on also. Okay, please. Uh, thank you, George, for uh, having a lively uh, quiz session. I'm sure actually, you know, kids will be very eager to uh, get their own uh, share, but. Uh, it's a online thing. We can't help. Somebody will be network issue will also be there. The person answering first need not be the person who just yes. really answered. Maybe because of network, he might have speed of the network also will matter. And uh, sometimes uh, answers are received and uh, maybe uh, the issues are there. So uh, keeping in view. But whatever the answers we received first on the chart box that was a given a winner, but doesn't that doesn't qualify that the person, other persons who answered wrongly or they, they were not the first. Uh, most important uh, thing is all the kids participate very actively in this quiz program. Uh, 
more than participation in the quiz its entire session uh, that was uh, organized on the spiders uh, uh, it's very important topic uh, because we all tend to know in the as it's told uh, in the beginning of the session we all tend to look at uh, bigger uh, animals uh, and when it comes when you think of uh, wild animals uh, or the fauna we think of we think of an elephant we think of a tiger and all but looking at the small things uh, small animals or uh, fauna like uh, spider is all which have also have a equal role in the ecosystem is very important so knowing about it uh, from the uh, from the uh, directly uh, from uh, experts is very uh, helpful and uh, you can uh, still work on work on the uh, read through the material and uh, we'll be even uh, you can get an interaction with the expert also uh, we will be sharing the email ids of uh, experts you can talk to them you can message them so that would be great actually next week even this uh, uh, next week also we will have an uh, webinar the links and the uh, all the uh, credentials will be stay shared in a day or two uh, next one is more uh, another uh, very important topic that's on vultures uh, you know the vultures is another uh, very important uh, creature and uh, it's a scavenger uh, it does a very good job in the ecosystem and uh, we'll have a very qualified experts uh, you know the best best in the country we are uh, the we'll be participating as expert here mr uh, chris borden and we dr vibhu prakash and dr prayag also will be uh, uh, discussing on the vulture issues so that's a, uh, a wonderful opportunity for all even for uh, uh, you know who are in the field of conservation also who are the uh, not, not just the young kids the people who are involved in the conservation also in this very enlightening session that will be the next week uh, since it is a more uh, uh, broad topic and uh, and many okay. interested in to speak uh, to participate here we put that webinar it will be starting from 3:30 next week next wednesday it will go up to maybe uh, uh, 6 o'clock so that will be 3:30 to uh, uh, 6 o'clock so just uh, announcement i am making here we'll put the uh, uh, details in the link also later on by today and tomorrow day or so maybe it will be there so thank you with this we come to the end of this uh, today's uh, webinar thank you sir yeah please thank uh, you sir thank you sir i thank, uh, thank, you, sir. thank you sir 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 Sorry, I didn't hear you. But uh, 